G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the south side of the map, we've got Salami who is playing as the Delhi in the color blue. Actually, I take that back. He's not playing the Delhi, he's actually playing the Rus. It's, it feels so weird casting Salami and not seeing him play the Delhi. Um, I, I guess this is... Uh, this is one of those rare occasions. Obviously, we've cast quite a few Salami games recently uh, in the show matches that happened. Uh, but this is actually a game that he's just playing on the ladder. And uh, he, he decided that he was going to play some Rus. So there you go. It is, of course, King of the Hill, which is the map that he has elected to, to, uh, or to pick the Rus on here. On the other side of the map, going up against him, it is going to be Strelbora, who's not playing the English, but rather is playing as the Delhi. Kind of interesting. You've got Strelbora on the Delhi, and uh, and you've got Salami not playing the Delhi. So a bit, bit curious, a bit curious. Maybe Strelbora knew about Salami and, and sort of looked to line him up there. But you can already see a couple of wolves being collected here by Strelbora, doing a great job early uh, of rounding these up. He's got to be careful not to lose the leash on these bad boys. As you can see, the scout is slowly but steadily going to be... Oh, he's got to be so careful. He's running out of range. So this is one of the things you always got to be careful of. And you can see the two two wolves have dropped aggro. So he's lost those. And now it means Salami is going to be able to potentially pick them up as well. Uh, so it can be really, really difficult um, to to micro or, or just to be aware of. But uh, now it looks like we've got a little bit of a battle over the Gaia. So already uh, you guys will be familiar with the Rus and the way that they play. They like to try and get out on the map and take these early hunts out. It looks like Salami... He's going to spot these two wolves. Whether he picks them up, it's going to be a different matter. So we'll have to see how he plays it. But uh, does scout out all the Delhi openings. Sees that uh, he's got the mosque. Already got the mill there. Going to be careful not to get too close to that town center. Uh, but looks like he is going to be jumping onto a gold mine as well. So looks like a straggler tree was chopped. Just doing the standard uh, build order that we seem to see these days. This is the, the beastie cutie build order. Uh, where you just chop 100 wood. So it makes a lot of sense, but... Now we can see that uh, he's also found at the top of the hill, Strahlbora, uh, who is uh, who is just up here killing some deer. A little bit of an unfortunate um, hunt situation here for Strahlbora. Uh, typically, you'd like to see the hunts on the lower ground. That is not the case this time, but interesting map generation. Oh, I, oh is he completely blocked in over here? I think he's completely blocked in. So Strahlbora has a pretty decent um, opening over or closed side over here. So he can essentially just get away with one wall on the front and then another wall over here. Another one over here, and he'll be fully walled in against the Rus. But obviously, the Rus wants to play it uh, to the late game or take it to the late game. Uh, when I say take it to the late game, I mean, you know, they, they just don't want to die in the first 15, 20 minutes. If they can survive that far, they're going to be very happy. So now we see that age up coming through. Dome of the Faith going to be coming down here. Five villagers going to be tapping away at that one. No villagers on wood at this point in time. So very early age up coming through here for Strelbora. We'll check and see what he's up to uh, shortly. But Salami on the other side of the map still yet to drop that age up down himself. Uh, so taking a little bit longer. Got the hunting cabin out. Plenty of scouts out already. So you can see he's got two scouts up here. One scout here and one on the way back in. So four scouts in total. And just going to go up with the golden age. Manages to get up to 210 bounty. Uh, now he's managed to clean up both of his own hunts. Didn't really get a lot of hunts from his enemy though. So that's kind of why it's, it's, uh, it's a little bit short. Also those wolves over on the side never actually got picked up by Salami. So... Not terrible, but at the same time, I mean, that, that's pretty decent for Strelbora. He'll be pretty happy with that. We'll take a look at now how Strelbora is doing. You can see that he is looking to uh, begin moving over onto the wood line. So a little bit of a delay in going over to the wood here. One of the things to note is that efficient production's already through. You can see Pidey is on the way in at the moment for Strelbora. Uh, but uh, now going to be just scouting out his enemy. Spots out all the deer or all the deer potentially carrying uh, scouts. Uh, but we'll, we'll check in with Salami now and see how he's doing. So you can see Golden Gate almost up now. Town Center continuing to create villages. It's got the houses here. Still no uh, extra scouts coming through. And what do we have here? Salami being a little bit cheeky. Could potentially be going for a second town center. I'm not sure what this is all about. So he's just gathering some stone uh, out of the, the stone outcropping for now. Three villagers up. I, I guess he's, he's looking to wall. 
What the heck is going on here? Obviously, he knows about the sacred site. He just wants to defend or pre prevent the Delhi from doing any, you know, sacred site shenanigans. So he goes for an early wooden fortress. This is very curious. I don't think I've ever seen this coming out. Uh, I like the way that he was just using his villagers to gather stone in the meantime because he just sort of misjudged exactly the timing on his... Uh, on, on his um, on his villagers dropping down that wooden fortress. So interesting opening already from Salami. Be curious to see whether we see professional scouts coming in. Indeed we do. Uh, so no real surprise there. You can see he's got four scouts down so far. Does get that uh, wooden fortress up. Is he going to be adding in a... Uh, is he just going to be running back? Surely he's going to be dropping a, mi a, a mining camp here. Yeah, you can see he's turning around now. Eight villagers on wood. You can see his force dropping right now. Uh, manages to pick up 57, so he, he'll be able to drop that one down. Scout gonna just be scouting this out and say, oh, that's interesting. Uh, so already a little bit of a, an interesting opening here. And now I'm gonna be going down with... Uh, uh, managing to pick up a couple of these wolves. I think he picked up... These still two these two still here. So there's a 100 bounty right there for uh, Salami. Let's see if he spots these ones out. Uh, ideally, you should be A moving, and indeed he does spot them out. So first one gonna get picked up, second one gonna get picked up. It's a beautiful sound. I absolutely love that one. Um, but you can see that he's really quite intent on on gathering uh, stone here. Probably just looking to get those um, those emplacements up. So smart move. Gets up to 280 now. Uh, so for Strobora, he's gone with just a very compact base here. Uh, I don't know if I necessarily agree with this. Typically, I want to see a bit more space around the town center. Uh, just to guarantee that you're going to have those potential... Or potential room for farms uh, later on in the game. Uh, but you can see it takes a little bit more thinking when it comes to doing your base building like that. And you can see that we've got the scholars standing by idly right now. You'd love to have him inside the stable. Uh, training out some units or getting some units out. Only going to be the one blacksmith here. It's going to take some time. About 10 minutes. So going to drop a second one instead. Very nice. Nice thinking uh, right there. And still scouting out his enemy, just spotting out what is going on. We'll check back in with Salami, see what he's up to. Doesn't really look that intent on doing anything specifically. Drops a second wooden fortress. So uh, all we can really say about Salami's play so far is that he is playing it safely. Uh, he is looking to prevent any sacred sites from being captured. Uh, that is for sure. Uh, and that he is getting professional scouts so far in, which is a pretty decent thing to be doing if you're playing as the Rus. Uh, food is one of those things that, as the Rus, you're going to need a lot more than most other civilizations, Delhi included. Uh, and interestingly, we've got Salami at the north here, or, or uh, Strobora at the north here, who's completely walled out from his second deer patch. So I suspect that we're going to even see Salami come up here and, oh my god, there's two sheep over there. Oh, that is so juicy. Look at these two hill sheep. I, I say hill sheep, but they're like... Ditch sheep. They're really doing a good job to hide right there. I reckon if we come back in another seven minutes, those bad boys will be three sheep if you're not careful. But now we see another wooden fortress coming down in the middle. He is really intent on making this thing stick, isn't he? I like the look of this. This is actually quite good uh, coming out from Salami. Um, back towards the base of Salami. It looks like he's kind of macroing towards that fast castle. No military production buildings coming down just yet. Obviously, we did see a stable down from his enemy on the other side, but he's going to need quite a bit of effort to actually push into that position. You can see that now 2,000 health on these bad boys here. He's also got the, um, the upgrade for the extra range horticulture now coming in for Strelbora. Uh, so you'll have a whole bunch of those upgrades coming through shortly. There's double broad axe. Um, mining will probably be through soon. What's it called? It's called Specialized Pick. Uh, should be coming through soon. But now you can see that we're, we're, re we're reaching this specific like window here. And this is something that I've noticed for, for a lot of Delhi players is you've got your Sanctity online, okay? But you can't actually challenge the Sacred Site because you don't have a RAM. So players are, are slowly but steadily working out that this is the way to actually defend the Sacred Sites. You quite literally just go full, um, you know, it's like a dark age or a feudal age rather castle uh you know there's six thousand health in the, these bad boys they fire out a lot of arrows he's going to be getting arrow slits on all of these as well so it's it's really kind of like a, a feudal age castle and I've, I've seen a lot of players starting to do this like english especially love to do this uh, on the sacred site so you can just get three or four of the outposts down and it's very difficult to push onto the site and now we see that there's going to need to be rams coming out there's no real way that you're able to to uh, damage or, or out damage out out survive rather let's just say that because there's so much health on these uh, but now you can see he's focusing down the scholars on the back line scholar tries to come in can't actually heal itself uh, and still continues to focus down the units. Now, keep in mind, I think there's villagers in here as well. So if he wants to, he's going to be able to pop these bad boys out and start repairing. But now you can see also getting Castle Turret coming in. 
which increases the damage of arrows fired from the wooden fortress by plus two. This is next level kind of salami stuff that is happening right now. It is like, it is the new way to play against Delhi. It is like, it, it's such a smart move, a supreme move right here. Like, look, the, the entire force of the Delhi is just completely exhausted manages to walk back and i mean we can check right now the military you can see that salami's killed 11 units he's lost zero and the villagers are going to come out repair the wooden fortress and then everybody's just back to normal 16 villagers looking to drop that age up as well so abby of the trinity gonna be coming through shortly you can see four relics all positioned out in fact all five relics positioned out towards the east here but keep in mind our uh, player in the north actually can't get through and now finally that battering ram gonna be coming through for Stralbora, but remember it's taken him so long to get that battering ram because it, it it's not a tech that researches especially quickly as the Delhi. but uh now we can see him looking to clean up a couple of scouts here he's got to be careful these guys all represent extra arrows that get to come out and now the battering ram gonna be making its way in these guys also give a nice little bit of torch damage towards that villagers as well standing idly by ready to go he manages to jump inside he falls back to the second batter or the second uh the, the second wooden fortress but now salami is really holding on and i love the way that he's playing up against delhi it really seems like such a smart move we're actually seeing a lot of play develop where people are working out how to beat delhi uh it's sort of become like the french in that regard obviously delhi's still a very strong civilization but people are working out how to beat it we're seeing a lot more barbicans a lot more chokunu uh and now a lot more um a lot more of these bad boys here now battering ram is going to be the primary issue how do you deal with the battering ram uh, well, scouts do an effective job. You can see them there. Villagers need to be out repairing the wooden fortress. Indeed, they are. Archers should be taking out the villagers. You can see the villagers underneath here with uh, with quite a bit of health. He doesn't have the upgrade on them, but still able to tank up a lot. Forces the battering ram back. It's down to 39 health at this point. Should be more than enough. And he manages to keep it alive. It does actually take it down. Loses the scout for it, but still holds on to this position. So that's the consequence of only pushing him with one battering ram. And from this pos position, I mean, behind this, Salami is just going to be easily able to warrior monk it up. Um, he's going to be able to just grab those relics and you can see he's going to get the two villagers out They're going to be repairing it up second battering ram going to be coming in right now And you can hear a little bit of chat going off between these two players I don't know exactly what was said uh, because who would need chat in a game in 2022 Definitely not me. That's for sure uh, But uh, now it looks like salami looking to hold this position bringing a few more villagers to the front Appreciating that his enemy's forces are starting to get bigger We hear relics being captured on the backside as well and now continuing to hold this position here um, he's got to be careful because the Springleds are out now as well. Uh, now, this is an interesting development because one of the things to note is that Springleds actually have extra range for the Rus. So they get this interesting little... I, I don't even know how to, how to describe it, but essentially there's a bug. If you get the arrow... So if you look down here, arrow slits, okay? If you get this first and then you get the Springled, it increases the range of the Springled as well. I think it's because of this one. I, I don't actually know what it is. But essentially, they got 11 range Springleds, which is ludicrous. You can see it coming through there. So 11 range Springleds. And now just holding on. No Springled coming through yet on this one at the front because it is obviously the one that stands on the front. So it needs... Uh, it, it's probably best you don't invest in a uh, in a Springled outpost on that bad boy. But now we see the Warrior Monk coming into the middle of the map. Going to be looking to capture the Sacred Site. So get your timers out. Make sure you set them for about 13 minutes, 40 seconds, I reckon it should take. I don't actually know how long it takes to capture a Sacred Site, but I feel like 20 seconds is appropriate. But I feel like 20 seconds is probably not a number that they would actually use in the game. Um, so... We'll, we'll see how it goes, but we'll, we'll call it 13, 13.45. So 23.45. Make sure you get your stopwatches out there. You can see... Oh, not, not too bad. Not too bad, Drongo. Call that from about two-thirds of the way through. 23.47. That is your go timer. Uh, so Salami managing to capture up this. And now, at, at this point, it's starting to look like you probably want to get some trebuchets in because you can see how much damage the Springwoods are doing to these buildings. So Springwood actually coming through for the Wooden Fortress. You can see that he gets the arrow slits first and then goes for the Springwood. And now going to be looking to hold this position. You can see just how much he's shredding these down completely. And now all the scouts going to be coming out. I love the way that Salami is playing this. So smart. Just a, a lot of scouts, a lot of wooden outposts. Uh, and we'll head now into this beautiful... Um, I wish I could get that sacred side off the screen. There we go. So this really does look to be the, the new way to, to win 
or, or to, to beat the Delhi. It's with this sort of play, but I definitely think in this matchup it makes a lot of sense to be doing it, especially when you consider the fact that there is the only there is only the sa single sacred site that's going to be able to do it. Now we see an outpost coming up in response. I'm not 100% sure why that is. Ideally, you'd like to see an age 3 for Stralbora and then potentially some trebuchets to counter this. But at the same time, it's going to it's gonna be a long task. It is going to take a while to get through it all. And Salami is just buying himself so much time behind this. Now it looks like more battering rams coming through. And uh, Springhold's going to be firing off at the outpost. I think the villager actually died that was building it. So unfortunate there for Stralbora. But now he's really starting to, to fill up all of these... Uh, fill up all of the wooden fortresses just with scouts. I think that's what he's looking for. But now you can see also heading up towards the north. Looking to grab up more and more relics. There are plenty of them up here. So there's still another three to go. But uh, you can hear those Springholds continuing to fire off over the middle of the map. And keep in mind our timer. I think we set it for 23 minutes and 45 seconds. So still, we're about 8 minutes out from that. Now you see that Warrior Monk coming into the middle as well. Just to really step on that sacred site. Another relic being captured up in the north here. Uh, so we'll have to see how he looks to play it out. But I got to say, I really like this way that it is uh, that he's found to counter the Delhi, especially on a map like this. I think with a, a one sacred site, it's definitely a lot easier uh, than, you know, two or three sacred sites. And now it sounds like more relics being picked up over towards that position. Three battering rams coming in now. And you can see those scouts really going to be working for it. I'd love to see maybe a spearman or two come out of Strelbora at this point. And, you know, with a name like Strelbora, you'd think he'd know exactly what a spearman does. Uh, but he's going to be trying his best to clean up all of these scouts, but they're just so effective at taking out the battering rams. And he continues to hold four Springles in the outpost here. Going to be doing so much work. And still up towards the north. We see him just chilling out. He's got a couple of relics there. So could potentially look to bring them back to his base. Could try and go on the aggressive with them. But just keep in mind the fact that there's this very frustrating wall. It, it's really come in the whole way. There's not a lot of threat that you can really do in that position. And now Salami just looking absolutely strong on this front line. Going to be adding in another wooden fortress. So not adding a keep adding another wooden fortress because remember these are the damage dealers i mean realistically these guys are doing 62 damage a shot so that they're two shotting archers they're three shotting horsemen they're three shotting scholars as well like it is a lot of damage that these guys are putting out uh and they've got very high pierce as well but now we can see on the map it looks like salami actually gonna be coming through doing a oh my god oh he's going for it he's going for it ladies and gentlemen there doesn't look to be too much threat i say that but he, at the same time just keep in mind, Salami hasn't scouted this. And when you look at the perspective from Strabora, he's got no idea what's going on. He just hears those alarms going off nonstop. And you can see that he's moving around the edges here. So smart. Salami now coming in. It looks like he might be coming in for the wall of lol. This could be absolutely massive. He's going to potentially go for one of the biggest wall of lols I've ever seen. Look how many, look how many units. He's, he's waiting. He's sitting, he's waiting. What is he waiting for? Is, is he waiting for... There's no other villagers, Salami, to take. Just hit the button, baby. Hit the button. I don't even think his enemy realizes. You can see the battering rams coming down at this point. Wallalols come off in the base as well. So he's trying to distract his enemy. And at the same time, over towards the base of his enemy. He's stolen so many villagers. He's just... 30 villagers. He just stole 30 villagers at this point. <laughs> 83 villagers for Salami. 23 villagers for Strobora. That is the stupidest Wallalol I've ever seen. So what did he do? He, he intentionally fed away these relics over here and drew the enemy's attention over to this position. And subsequently, this was the main Wallalol. And now he's going to be putting wooden fortresses down here. You can see sprinkled out or sprinkled emplacements coming down. And now a castle's come down in the middle as well. He's really holding on. You can see the scouts. This is just next level Rus play from Salami. So creative. Such a beautiful play honestly and once again we see the failure of lack of trebs coming in sounds like more units under attack over towards the back here and you can see the wooden fortress is really getting in, in into work and now salami gonna be looking to pick off the majority of these battering rams that's all he really wants to trade out he's got 69 idle villagers right now very nice salami <laughs> very nice and you can see he's holding the sacred site that's all he's doing he's just standing on the sacred site he doesn't even care he can just hold all day. And now the sacred site is going to slowly but steadily go back up because there's no more units to contest this sacred site because the outpost from the... Or the sprinklers from the outpost are just doing so much work. Clean it up completely. There is absolutely nothing that Stralbora can do. He's going to have to head back to the drawing board, find some string, find some bow, and... Wrap out a GG, I guess, is probably going to be his best bet. Fellas, I hope you've enjoyed this, ca this casted game. Salami is an absolute beast. 
and never really lets us down. So thank you, Salami. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.